It's Friday, March 1st, 2013. Let's talk about what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com. First up, we have a special call out for help from the community to a member of the community. XDA recognized developer Chiefs Reloaded, also known as Ryan Scott, is a cyanogen mod device maintainer who has a horrible, horrible disease. It's known as necrotizing fasciitis, and essentially it's a flesh eating disorder. Not that he eats flesh, but that his flesh is being eaten. Yeah, sorry. But as such, he's had to spend the last three months in the hospital undergoing treatment, which has of course made things incredibly difficult on his family. And so to help out, the community has come together. Together. Polo Heskierdo, I'm probably saying that wrong, but whatever, has started an Indiegogo campaign to try to help him recoup some of his losses, to try to help him get back up on his feet. From the looks of things, I think they were asking for $10,000 to start off with. The last time I looked at it, it was well over $20,000. I think it was actually over $25,000. And there's still like 83 days left on the campaign. So if you want to help out a good cause, if you want to help out a member of the community who is an excellent contributor, and not just for that reason, but just the fact that we're helping out the community, you can head on over to the Indiegogo campaign page. I'll have a link to that down in the video description, as well as the rest of the story. Additionally, Death Becomes You, a very awesome guy. I got a chance to meet at the Android barbecue is doing an auction on his Google Plus page for one of his custom designed, I think it's a zombie Android, that he gave away one of those at the Android barbecue and has another one available. So if you want to pick that up to help out charity, and I think there's actually been three or four other items donated to go along with that package. The last time I looked at that, it was at about $400, but it is a very awesome gift package kind of thing, and you'd be helping out somebody who does need your help. Links to that will be down in the description as well. But moving right along, let's go ahead and get into the news. Not too long ago, we talked about twerp version 2.4, I believe. Well, version 2.4.2 is now available, and it has some cool newness to it, some new flashiness to it. The couple of things that make it really cool, in my opinion, first up, there's a bunch of screen dimming, screen control activities you can do while you're inside of twerp. So if you're flashing something that takes a little while, or you're doing it late at night, you can have your screen turn off, or you can have it dim, things like that. And additionally, they worked with Chainfire to make it check to see if your device is rooted, and if it's not, you can tell it to inject Super SU into it. So essentially, you wouldn't have to do it from inside of your device, you wouldn't have to flash anything special to it, just use twerp and hit a button and it would take care of it for you. It should still be considered a work in progress though, so if you are interested in this, you should check out the forum thread for more details. Moving right along, another very cool app was talked about this week over on the portal. With the release of Android 4.1, they unveiled some very cool stuff with regard to NFC and beaming stuff back and forth between devices, but it was always very limited in terms of what you could send. You could send a link or uh, a link or a contact, and that was pretty much it. I mean, you could do a little more than that, but yeah, it was very, very limited. Samsung introduced a specific S-beam feature that you could do between Samsung devices, and you could beam things that were larger, like videos, and essentially what that was doing is using Wi-Fi Direct over NFC, or using NFC to make the Wi-Fi Direct connection between two devices. Well, due to that limitation and not being able to really do it on other devices, XDA4 member Mohammed AG has created an app that I think he's calling FileBeam, and essentially it's just an add-on to your share menu. So any app on your device that has the option to share can now share to a beam, and you can, using NFC, tap it to another device, and what it does is it uses Bluetooth on the back end to actually make the connection, and if Wi-Fi Direct is available, I think it uses that as well. Very interesting, although it seems there may be some issues with it. I read through the forum thread and there were a few people having trouble getting it on their device, but a lot of them were people that didn't know that they didn't have NFC on their device. But anyway, it seems like a very cool app if you want to be able to transfer larger things between devices, transfer documents between devices, or pictures, or videos, or whatever. Uh, and actually being Bluetooth, once it makes that NFC connection, you should, in theory, be able to move away from each other and not have to sit there in that weird little phone grip of death for however long. Yeah, kind of weirdness. So anyway, if this is something that interests you, make sure to read over the forum thread. There really shouldn't be any sort of hazards to using it. I mean, it's just using NFC on your device and adding something to the share menu. So yeah, go ahead and take a look at it. Maybe give it a try if it's something that you're interested in. All right, and the next couple of stories are just sort of XDA housekeeping. As I've talked about in the previous few videos, Ubuntu Touch is now available, at least in the developer preview version but they only released it for a few devices, but we also sort of unveiled that it was CyanogenMod based and that it was very, very easy to port stuff 
for other devices. Well, we managed to get a feature over on John O'Bacon's blog. John O'Bacon's the community manager at Ubuntu, if you are not familiar with him. Apparently there was a bit of a, an Ubuntu port-a-thon where they worked on porting Ubuntu to as many devices as they could. And several of the ones it got ported to, as mentioned over on John's blog, were the Galaxy Nexus Toro, the Toro Plus, the Sony Xperia S, Xperia T, Galaxy Note, Galaxy Note 2, Asus Transformer Infinity, Nexus One, Galaxy Tab 2 10.1 Wi-Fi, and the Transformer Pad TF300T. That's quite a mouthful. One way or another, though, very nice to see the XDA community getting some recognition from Canonical for the hard work that we do. Or more to the point that you guys do, because really I'm just a flapping head. And we move on. Don't know if you remember or not, XDA used to have a marketplace on the forums, but it got shut down a while back. I'm not sure of the reasoning behind it, it probably had a lot to do with spam or mass marketing or whatever, but XDA has now declared an official partnership with another site for a marketplace, and that is Swappa. And not only that, they're working on adding some Swappa integration into the XDA site and vice versa. So if you go over to Swappa, you can now use your XDA forum login to log in and post new things or buy things with. You can link to a device that you're trying to sell on Swappa in your XDA forum member profile down in the signature although only one device at a time. And I'm sure there will be more integration and more connectivity happening between XDA and Swappa over the next few months. So realistically, if you're looking to buy or sell a device, you might want to head on over to Swappa and take a look. Now for a little bit of XDA TV specific news. If you hadn't noticed, this channel has had some significant growth in the last year. When I started, I think we were at 20,000 subscribers and we're getting very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers on this channel. And so the higher ups at XDA thought that we should have a contest, a giveaway, if you will. And for that giveaway, we're going to be giving away two Nexus 7s. For the first one, you just have to be a part of the subscriber base here on YouTube, so subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and if you are already subscribed, I think you're already in the entry for it. This contest will close as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers and one will be randomly selected. At least that's what the portal post says. If you want to double check the rules on that, make sure to check the portal post. Now the second part of it is a little bit more interesting. To win the second Nexus 7, all you have to do is share your favorite XDA developer TV video on your favorite social network. Well, those being Google+, Twitter, and Facebook. But you can share one video per day per social network, so you can get up to three entries into the contest per day. Do make sure to mention XDA by our username on whatever social network it's on. You can find all of those on the portal of XDA, I think we have links to them, and on the YouTube channel we should have them in the banner at the top of the channel. And the contest will officially end at the end of the day, Friday, March 15th, 2013. And apparently I will be doing the, the reveal, the unveil of the winner on March 18th in the Monday video. So if you're interested in one of those things, one, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you could have a chance to win that one. Or two, make sure to share your favorite XDA developer TV videos on all of your social networks every day between now and March 15th. The more entries, the more times you chance you have to win. Flabbity flabbity. And to wrap things up, there were three other videos posted on XDA Developer TV this week. The first one was kind of out of left field. It was an Android Basics 101 backing up your apps and your data with TK. Second, and again kind of out of left field, we had the first official XDA Hangout, and it was a round table with Francisco Franco and talking about the DMCA with Adam Outler. That video was put together by Jaredog, so if you wanted to see that, or maybe get some information on being involved in the next Hangout, whenever that happens to be, you might want to check that video out. And the third one was another video from TK, another app review talking about fast app switching with Sidebar. But anyway, that's about all I've got for you today. As always, make sure to hit that like button down below if you like this video, and hit subscribe if you want to be subscribed to our channel and receive the content as soon as it becomes available in your subscription box. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on Monday.